for today's notes, you're going to need to pull out your 11.3 day one notes and homework to help you. Basically, what I need you to be looking at is our fundamental trigonometric identities while we're going through and trying these problems. So I'm going to go ahead and put it at the top of my notes for now, and I'll scooch it down as I need to. But what we're doing is we're going to be using identities to rewrite trigonometric expressions. In example two, you're going to see three different types of problems. The first, we're going to be rewriting an expression in terms of cosine. The second, we're going to be rewriting the terms um, or in terms of sine. And then the next, we're going to rewrite the expression in terms of one trigonometric function or it could have a numerical value like one. So we're going to start right here by rewriting each expression in terms of cosine theta. When I take a look at part A, I see that the denominator is already written in terms of cosine, but the numerator isn't. So I want to rewrite this sine squared theta. If I look at my identities, I see sine squared theta here in the Pythagorean identity cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals one. Remember, you are capable of rewriting the trigonometric identities. So if I just want sine squared theta, I could subtract cosine squared theta from each side. So that would give me cosine squared theta equals one minus cosine squared theta. So I'm going to put 1 minus cosine squared theta all over 1 minus cosine theta. Now initially when you look at this, you might say, okay, they're both in terms of cosine, which was the goal. And um, it doesn't look like it can simplify because the ones can't cancel and the cosines can't simplify um, because of the subtraction. However, it can be simplified further. So what we actually have going on here is in the, in the numerator, we have a difference of two squares. One is the perfect square of one. Cosine squared is the perfect sine of cosine. So I could rewrite this. Remember the difference of squares is when you have a squared minus b squared, you rewrite it as a plus b times a minus b. So this would become 1 for the a plus minus and then cosine for the b. Oops, cosine theta. All over 1 minus cosine theta. So now you can see why I wanted to rewrite it using the difference of squares because these can cancel out and I'm left with one plus cosine theta. So now I've simplified it and it's in terms of cosine. So I don't wanna mess with it any longer. That's my final answer. If you take a look at B, none of these functions are cosine. So I'm gonna have to rewrite all of them. Secant, I know, is the reciprocal of cosine, so I'm going to rewrite that as 1 over cosine theta minus tangent. We know tangent can be rewritten as sine theta over cosine theta, and I'm currently multiplying that by sine theta. And when you multiply fractions, you go across the top, across the bottom. So if you want to make a note that technically this is over 1, I think that could be helpful. Because now you can see we have 1 over cosine theta minus sine squared. Just like how x times x is x squared, sine times sine is sine squared. All over cosine theta, because cosine theta times 1 is cosine theta. Now, whenever you want to add or subtract fractions, they must have a common denominator. These do have that. So I can condense this to 1 minus sine squared theta over cosine theta. I still haven't written my final answer in terms of only cosine. 
So I need to replace this one minus sine squared theta, which reminds me of my Pythagorean identity. So if I want it to look like one minus sine theta, I would use this identity right here. I already have the one, so now I would have to subtract sine squared theta from each side. If I do that, it would cancel out here, and I'm just left with cosine squared theta equals one minus sine squared theta. So one minus sine squared theta is equal to cosine squared theta. I have that over cosine. This is very similar to the idea of x squared over x, cosine squared over cosine. This would be gone and this reduces to the first power, so that's cosine theta as our final answer. Now let's try rewriting expressions in terms of sine. I can see the numerator is written in terms of cosine, so I'm going to have to change that. And then the denominator is fine because it's already in terms of sine. So cosine squared theta is right here. And I just want to figure out how I can rewrite it. If I just want cosine squared of theta, I have to move the sine squared theta over to the other side. So I'm going to subtract sine squared theta from each side. That gives me cosine squared theta equals 1 minus sine squared theta. So 1 minus sine squared theta. All over 1 minus sine theta. This is very similar to what we saw in part A. Whenever we have 1 minus a trig function squared, that's a difference of two squares because 1 is a perfect square of 1. Sine squared is a perfect square of sine. So this becomes 1 plus sine theta times 1 minus sine theta, all over 1 minus sine theta. By me factoring using the difference of two squares, you can see now that the denominators canceled out with one of the um, expressions, meaning I'm left with 1 plus sine theta. Cotangent squared theta needs to be written in terms of sine as well. Well, I'm not adding or subtracting anything, so I just need to write this, and I can use an identity to do that. To rewrite cotangent squared theta, I need to get it by itself. I'm currently adding one, so I need to subtract one from each side, meaning cotangent squared theta is equal to cosecant squared theta minus one. This is still not in terms of sine, so I need to go further. Um, I can't use a Pythagorean identity because I already used that, and that would give me right back to my starting point. So instead, I'm going to rewrite cosecant using a reciprocal identity. I know cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. Now, because cosecant is squared, sine must also be squared. Now, taking a look at this, I can't simplify any further unless I wanted to find a common denominator um, and add, which I don't want to waste my time with that. It is in terms of sine, so I'm done. Lastly, we're going to rewrite the expression in terms of a single trigonometric function, or it could be a number value like 0, 1, 2, something like that. Taking a look at E, it's currently two trig ex expressions, and I just want one. So I'm going to rewrite tangent as sine theta over cosine theta and cotangent, so you can see I'm using the ratio identities, as cosine theta over sine theta. We can see the cosines cancel and the sines cancel. Now a common mistake is... Um, a lot of students write their final answer as zero, but that's not true. Whenever we divide something by itself, it's equivalent to one. So when stuff cancels out, it really is becoming one. And that's our final answer. Part F, we have 
sine times cosecant minus cosine squared theta. I think the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, rewrite cosecant because I can visualize in my mind what's going to happen. Cosecant, I know, is the reciprocal of sine. I'm just going to leave this second part alone for now. Sine is in the numerator and in the denominator. So I'm just left with 1 minus cosine squared theta. Now I do see one trig function, but I want the whole expression to be one trig function. This is two terms, not one. So that means I need to go further. 1 minus cosine squared theta. I need to think, how could I rewrite that? Well, it does remind me of my Pythagorean identity right here. So 1 minus cosine squared theta, here's the 1, and I can subtract cosine squared theta on each side. Now if I do that, I'd have my 1 minus cosine squared theta over here, and then cosine squared would be canceled out here, and I'm just left with sine squared theta. So that's my final answer, because that's a monomial, and it is one trig function. I know this might seem a little bit confusing because I went through it pretty quickly since it's a, a video for my remote learners, but I'm hoping this is helpful enough for you to start the homework. So make sure you have these identities written out and you use them to help rewrite in terms of cosine for one and two, rewrite in terms of sine for three and four, and then rewrite as a monomial for five through eight. So use the first example for this, the second example for this, and the third example for this section.